Hello, hello, hello. So, okay. I know no one's going to read this, so I'm going to read it out for everyone. Okay. With everything that's happening with the business and the ideas and where we're at mentally, this is a bit of a skeleton idea of what we the thinking that we're going through right now and we're open to new ideas and whatever else and I'm sure there's a thousand things we can add to this but my take on it is the first thing is the next step we take as a business we want to have true sustainability you know is there a future for everyone and something worth fighting for because essentially we as human beings always want to be part of something that you know is more than us but also goes into the future you know so the idea that i'm thinking of is it has to you know last into the future so in summary it's about getting the right plumbers to the right client in a more efficient and effective way so get plumbers out to a client in a more efficient and effective way it simply comes down to that and why that simple concept will last forever is no matter what happens even if plumbers or robotics takes over plumbing we have to keep creating better and better ways to get that robot to do its job better for the client so that idea essentially is going to hold forever in a practical sense what does it look like in real life for us if technology is taking over everything the human aspect is becoming less relevant by the minute we are moving faster towards a technology based world for example being an uber driver or being a delivery driver will come to an end in about 10 years as robotics will take over, automated cars will take over, even dispatching a robot will come out of the delivery van, pick up the package, you know, walk up to your house and drop it off and scan it off and leave. So basic human skills are no longer needed and people must move to more complex roles like looking after the technology that's now doing their job. Yeah, so the first simple step we need to take at YLPG is using the power of technology in communication to unite the best fit plumber with the best fit client. So in a real life situation, how would that look? So right now, if a client calls a plumber, there could be a hundred reasons why that particular plumber is not suitable for that job. For example, the client is looking for a pl plumber that does hydronic heating and a gas hot water system in one. So it's one unit. It's a very rare skill. In my experience, most plumbers or companies will take on that job, even though they have no experience in it. They will just say, I'll figure it out. I'll watch YouTube. I'll find it out, which is all well and good. But if we were to provide a better product for the consumer, we would take on the job, we would take on the responsibility of the job and we would have to go through our database and find the best fit contractor who's been through all of the processes and procedures and we're like, yep, we trust this person, they know the skills and then we get the right plumber to that client who can realistically, with their experience, fix this hydronic heating issue. And end of the day, clients will like us more as we're putting the correct plumber at the time they need and meet the client's needs better than someone else. Secondly, there are things about the company, thousands of things that we have implemented and processes and procedures and cultures and checkbox and things like that we've learnt over the years, over you know tens and tens of thousands of jobs that will make it more enticing for people to work with the company rather than go to a small business. F 
For example, a plumber may be on site and they forget to do one of their processes. They forget to purge a gas line. We as a company will have processes in place that will say, hey, did you do this? Did you purge? And they're like, oh, sorry about that. I forgot it. Or I didn't, was not even aware of it. Or I've made a human error. So all these little things that people may not appreciate about us, we will be able to um, provide, you know, to the to the world and end of the day consumer again wins out and hopefully they see the value in us or we can show them the value in us or you know there's thousands of examples but another example may be a, you know a plumber may do a roof work and they may go on holiday and the customer's roof starts leaking or something happens and if they're on holiday in another country nothing really can be done they just have to call another plumber or whatever else but if we if they call us because we're the we're responsible for the job. Even if the plumber's on holiday that did the job, we will find someone else suitable and get that customer out of trouble. So the customer has a bit more um, depth in what they're buying. A bit more, they'll have a call center, they'll have history, they'll have all this kind of stuff. So essentially the drift is, the more resources you have to choose from and the better we can organize it, which is our responsibility to RPG, to organize it in a way that works within the legal bounds will lead to a better outcome for everyone. Customers will get a service they're happy with, traders will be much happier as they have the support which they could not afford or do or be part of without us and the office staff will be able to work for a company that's a lot better, better paid because the company is doing better, the skill sets are better, the knowledge is better the staff members are more valuable to the world and hence you get paid more. You're teaming up with the right running partner in no other way. And so we've looked at the advantages for the, for the consumer, but what about the advantages for the plumber? So as a plumber, you know, you've got a thousand restrictions you may not have the right equipment you may not have the support staff you may not have someone in the office helping you take calls or deal with you know urgent matters while you're already on site or dealing with the plumbers or all these other resources that you sort of think you can do but when a push comes to shove you may crumble under the pressure you know large jobs have can lead to legal disputes um, large jobs need to be paid for you know there has to be um, some kind of financial backing to pay for jobs that roll over tens or tens and tens of thousands of dollars. A lot of plumbers won't take on jobs worth more than a few hundred dollars because they're too worried about being able to bankroll that job. So the consumer's not getting a long-term fix in that situation as well. So that's another place where we can step in, we can afford to do those things, we have the history, we have the backing to be able to create an outcome where the plumber wins, we win and the consumer wins and where without us all working together would have never happened. Um, another example is, you know, what they call shocks in a business, where just unexpected things happen, where it's COVID, or whether it's someone getting injured, or whether it's government restrictions or new laws. We, you know, putting our putting our resources together should be able should have a higher chance to get through that shock in a business than would an individual. For example, if an individual that's the main head of that job site gets sick or something happens and they leave the job site, the whole job site can lead to a collapse. While if we are responsible for the job, while PG can take over the job site, find another set of tradies and get it done straight away without leading to loss in income, loss in wages, damages to the client. Pretty basic stuff, but um, you know, we can figure out more and more complex ways of helping customers in the future, but this is just a start. So now it comes back, so the next part is like, if trades have been working well all this time, why should we change it? So from our personal experience over this time, not from what other companies are doing and all that kind of stuff, but our personal experience is, trades people, most of the we have met, and you know, that are into their 40s or 50s, a lot of them have are not happy with what they've done with their lives, what they've achieved, what they are in their doing right now. And so they generally are not happy. Uh, and clients, every single client we speak to, everybody out there, 
from you know the TV shows to whoever, always say the same thing. We're spending a lot on tradespeople and this, and we're not getting the value that we pay for. So there's some kind of disconnect there. There's definitely not an outcome that people are want. They're living with it, but they're not um, happy with it. So we want to reduce that unhappiness for both sides. Also, there has been a cultural shift in society where essentially people want to live you know, work from the office, they don't want to work in trades jobs, they want to have that work from anywhere in the world kind of laptop job. So there's definitely a shortage of tradies of any kind in the Western world. And if you ask anybody, finding a plumber that was suitable, had the time, you know, had the experiences, had the backing, um, is almost next to impossible. It's got complaints all over the world. So we as a company need to solve this problem and the one way is having more people and tradies to choose from we pick who we can from who's suitable and get them out to the client so the client when they call us has a higher chance of them getting the service they need as if they were to call anybody else fourth from our experience and this seems very subtle but it is a big deal is Clients don't really know how to deal with tradies, create contracts, or really do. They all want to be a project manager, like they're watching the block, and then suddenly they think they're project managers, or they can manage the tradie. And tradies are in constant disputes with clients. That's the you know number one pain in a business: disputes with clients, not seeing eye to eye, and not having the skills, mindsets, abilities willingness patience to be able to work through that very few do probably one in ten um, at best and they are struggling themselves so this leads to both sides just giving up or just settling for what they can so as a company we need to have a massive emphasis on cooperation teamwork character building personality building and a culture in the company that everyone can teach each other and keep each other to this mental standard that we can show each other better ways to communicate that will lead to more harmony and a better quality of outcome for both people. And another thing we've noticed is a strong disconnect in the consumer's mind from a human-based product to a manufacturing product. For example, on eBay, you can buy anything that's been grown in a field in Peru. It gets shipped all the way to Thailand, turned into an actual product that you can use, shipped to Australia, taken off the docks, delivered to your house for $3. While if you get a $3 part and you install it inside your house, it might be $500, which really the consumer can't make sense of that. This is because the manufacturing is predominantly an asset-based business where a massive asset or a process or a system is creating a product which has become efficient over time while we are a human-based system and human-based systems is full of errors, costs that are unknown and we just have not been able to reduce those costs more than that and still sustain a quality of life that we want for everyone. So part of the value we're going to be able to add to the world is to educate the consumer so the expectations of the consumer and the expectations of the tradesman better li line up to what the reality is at this given time in our world. And that can be done through social media or videos. And the last note I have here is, if we don't do all these things like strategic, strategic innovation, someone else will, be, will go out there and they'll create what we're trying to do right now. And they'll just dominate the market, we'll get driven out of the market, just like taxi drivers got driven out by Uber, Uber will be driven out by automated cars. And once automated cars come out, um, people will stop buying cars. So, you know, manufacturing of cars will drop because people will just order cars like they order pizzas. You just order it, they come to your house, no one owns cars anymore. And this process just goes on and on. So we just have to keep flowing with the process as we go. And just with the last thing, pretty much with all these ideas, the hardest part is not making up these ideas, but the actual implementation of the ideas in a way that is logical, where we have to do 
the first step and not do step 15 when it's time for step one. Otherwise you can lose the entire business. So we need help from everyone and put our minds together and really just be on the same page, know what your departments are and lead to what the world is asking for essentially.